today on Nation, the Window Cleaners Podcast, we're talking all about subcontracting, selling yourself. If you've done it or you've not, either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up? Happy Nation Day, baby! If it's your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully you dig it. Hopefully you like everything we've put out. We've done 180 plus episodes. There's a ton of content. Comes out every single Friday. We've been doing it for over three years. It's a lot of content. Go back, binge it all. I love, love, love when you guys tell me about binging and uh, how many episodes you can fit in a day. So that's super cool. Thanks to all you guys who do. Thanks to Nathan Young. What's up, man? And uh, Robert Young also. I don't think they're related. I just put those names down there and just happened to notice that they were both Youngs. Anyway. Um, thank you to you guys. Uh, if you are somebody who watches every episode, you give the thumb up right now if you're watching on YouTube. By the way, hundreds of views on YouTube every video. And yet, there's like 10, 20 thumbs up. Where is everybody? Why are you not thumbsing up? Anyway, thumbs up on the video and even more importantly, comment down below if you're watching YouTube. If you are on any of the SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, listening to the podcast, what's up? More of you guys listen like tenfold than uh, do watch videos. So thanks. I have a face for radio. So I'm sorry. But thank you guys for everything. If you want to be one of the cool kids, certified, of course, uh, make sure that you order your supplies through me. My number is 862 312 2026. That is a cell phone. So call me, text me, shoot me a text, say, yo, Jersey, everything is in my cart. Put it in, man. Your nose is crooked. I don't know. Tell me something, and I would love to do that. Uh, It costs you nothing extra, of course, but I get credit for it. That's like a virtual high five of awesomeness. And you guys who do that are absolutely amazing. That's how I make my cheddar. If I don't do that, I will starve in like four weeks because I got enough, you know, reserves. I've been planning for uh, slow sales. (laughs) Anyway, all right. Well, today we're talking about subcontracting, and I got this idea. I just talked to somebody on the phone about subcontracting uh, high-rise stuff, and it got me thinking, like, subcontracting is a really cool topic because I love subcontracting. Now, there's a few different things. Now, I would rather, of course, be the subcontractor than subcontract work out unless... Unless, of course, you're talking about high-rise, which we'll get to in a second. I love subbing that out because I don't want to do it. But here's the thing. There's only so much of us, and we don't all have the amount of employees that we need for every single job. There's a lot of jobs that come up. It's a huge opportunity, but guess what? Last minute, you're thinking about it like, man, this just isn't going to work with what I got. I don't have enough people, right? If you don't have enough people or you don't have enough staff, and you can't actually get the work done, it's really, really hard to pass on it. Now, there's absolutely nothing wrong with passing on work when it's too big. The scope's too much. It's just too big. It's just, there's so much, I've done it. I've, I've done it in halfway through a walkthrough. And I'm like, dude, we just cannot do this in a timely manner. It just, we have too much on our plate. It was, uh, the last one I did was a complex, complex, most notable building in our city, and uh, I knew a couple of other people that was bit, that were bidding, and I'm like, I'm going to finish a walkthrough just to be, you know, whatever, but I'm not even bidding on it. We talked about it afterwards, and uh, I know uh, one of the guys who uh, was there, he said that uh, he was, of course, bidding on it, and he had no time for it, and he ended up losing the contract because of that, um, and I know that only because uh, we then got subbed part of the work when he couldn't uh, do what he said he was going to do. So anyway, uh, so passing on work's huge. Passing on work when you're not ready is a way to save face. It's the way to keep your company uh, up. If you do a job or say you're going to do a job and you can't do it, well, it does make you look bad. And it really, really does make you look bad. So if you don't have the staff to do it, subcontracting is the way to go. Now, there's a few different ways of subcontracting happens. Now, before anybody says anything, I like subcontracting. I like doing it for people. 
I like having it done for me. Now, I have, before when I was in Wisconsin, I had a border that we kind of created with a buddy of mine there. Anything north of that border, he took care of. It doesn't matter if it was my job or his job. Anything south of that border, I took care of, no matter if it was his job or my job. Now, the way that you subcontract is that the person doing the work, of course, makes the most amount of money, but the person subbing the work out makes some money too. So it, it really, really is a win-win situation. Um, by the way, the comment, because you guys have been killing it on comments, by the way. That's so awesome. Uh, thanks to Ryan Fuster with this thumbs up too. By the way, I better see that on there. But um, if you're watching, comment down below if you've done subbing and what the highest ticket subbed job you've done is. Um, I know uh, I've subbed jobs that was in the five plus figures. Five figures is the biggest one. Um, and th that was uh, subbing uh, on board with uh, some other uh, contractors. But picking up large jobs, this is why I always, always say to be friends with who you are in competition with. If you got somebody in your area and they just don't want to be your friend, they just do not want to be your friend, cool. Don't force it. But when you're in a pinch or they're in a pinch, you're not going to have each other. And there's something super, super valuable about that. By the way, go make friends with the people in your area. I know uh, John, Long, Long, uh, John Longstreet, um, he's one of those guys uh, who's actually close to me. I haven't had a chance to really meet yet. Uh, but he's super close friends with some of his competition. They met afterwards. He just stopped by and was like, what's up, dude? And then every time you see him on the street, he'd just say hi again. It's really, really cool to kind of see that uh, camaraderie because I've bought businesses that way and uh, I've done a ton of subcontracting that way too. So be friends with your competition. But either way, let's get on to subcontracting. Enough babbling about it. Uh, but the first one is uh, when you sub work for a window cleaner. There is something about you doing work for somebody else that is more intimidating for them than you. If I came to you and I said, hey, this is Jersey with XYZ window cleaning. We're in the same city of you as you. I have this job that's just out of my scope and I'm looking to sub it out. Or we're just to the city north of you, but we don't go down there and I wanted to know if I was sub this out. There is an unwritten rule in subcontracting that you do not, do not jack up the relationship between that. That right there, I know guys, and I've had it done to me, and you are a piece of garbage if you do. But here's the thing. If you are getting work subbed to you, that person who's subbing it to you is like, oh man, like I got to call somebody and then I'm going to lose the account. Like what if they take it? Why are they subbing for me? They could just steal the work from me. So you have to have sub relationships where you understand you're the sub. Do not be a POS and go out there and steal their job. I've had that happen to me where all of a sudden the guy I was subbing to contacted the person and then took it from me now if you really wanted to do that have a talk with the person say hey i've been subbing this job for a really really long time is there uh any way that i could you know take that job from it's just so stupid don't even do that because for the little bit of money that you're uh or the little bit of money you're losing by subbing work for somebody it's not worth it to keep the relationship. I had one guy that every single job that came by that, like that border, I was saying, one of the jobs he had was, gosh, I think we did like 20 projects from 20 monthly accounts. They were all the same uh, franchise. And uh, it just was something he didn't want to do. It just didn't make sense for him to come all the way down. So guess what? We did it and we paid him, or he took maybe $10 a store, uh, $10 a location, and we took the rest. That's kind of how it was. Basically told me that's what it was. I never raised my prices. It was to help him out. He helped me out when I had stuff out that way. Uh, you were allowed to take a franchise that has multiple locations even if they're not there. So it's a super, super uh, good relationship to have. So taking work from somebody and uh, doing the sub for them is awesome. That's the first way that you sub work. The second way is that subbing work for a janitorial company. This is absolutely my favorite of all of these things I'm talking about. Because a janitorial company, A, 
they don't really want to do the windows because windows are kind of more specific, I guess, if you'd call it that, right? Windows are more of a, you need to have skill, the window cleaning skill to clean windows well. And they don't want to give their janitors or their custodial people a squeegee and say, hey, try to figure it out. Because it's going to take them a billion hours and it's going to look like a horse sneezed on it, right? So they'll contact a window cleaner. Now, I've actually gotten work from janitorial companies by calling janitorial companies and asking for work. Uh, I do that, gosh, I've gotten probably... 20 or 30 janitorial companies over my span that I, I've just called and said, hey, uh, my name is Jersey with XYZ Window Cleaning and uh, we would love to create a relationship with you and help you by subbing out your window cleaning. If we ever get any work for homes, because we didn't do uh, home uh, maid service, we'll send them your way. And we did send work back and forth. Now, they're happy because it's like, okay, well, people have been asking. Well, now you can add it to your ticket. I can price it for you, give you the price, and tell you what to charge, right? And we did that a lot of times. And this is where this whole thing works is that a janitorial company may not be able to bid the job properly. So what I would do, they would call me up and say, hey, we got this new one coming up. It's this uh, bank, right? This, uh, this bank down the street. I would go down there, take a look at it real quick, call them back and say, hey, uh, that job monthly would be $45. And then what I would do is give them some of that. I would say, hey, it's $45, but we're going to do it for $35 or whatever the, the breakup is. And that way they're making the money. They know what to charge the end price. They know that they're competitive. They're not leaving money on the table and they're not going to uh, be out of the ballpark. But they know, okay... Now, just for somebody else is doing it, all they're going to do is send me an, a, a PO basically for it. I'm going to do the work. They're going to make $10 or whatever the, the percentage is, 10, 20% of the job. And all they have to do is the bureaucracy side. They just got to charge the money for it. So it's a great relationship, great relationship with janitorial companies. I called the biggest the biggest jobs that I've ever subbed from a company I had, I subbed work for them for probably 10 or 12 years. I mean, a very long time. And then they, of course, started their own window cleaning, uh, you know, not franchise. They started window cleaning themselves. They found a guy who used to do it, apparently, and started doing it themselves. So I did lose them eventually. But I called them up one day. I know they were one of the bigger cleaning places around uh, where I had lived. And I said, hey, this is Jersey from XYZ Window Cleaning. I just wanted to call to see if there was any opportunity that we could do some uh, subcontract window cleaning for you. I would love to be able to help you out. I'd love for you to still make some money. And, uh, you know, then we're not stepping on toes. And the lady said to me, she goes, oh my gosh, I can't believe you're calling. I literally stopped a conversation to pick up the phone we were talking about how much we dislike our window cleaners that we have. We've been subbing out to this company and they just smell. They're just gross. They smoke. They're, they're again, nothing wrong if you smoke, but you know you smell like an ashtray when you do. And uh, people are complaining and we are losing work because of how just dirty these this company is. I can't believe you're calling now. And I said, well, you know, I guess, you know, great minds think alike. Blah, blah, blah. I can't remember what I said, but... It was one of those things, you know, I'm not, I'm not bugging your uh, office or something. And uh, she said, that's awesome. You know, uh, tomorrow uh, lunch, I had a lunch meeting with somebody who actually backed out. So my lunch is free. Would you like to meet? I said, yes, absolutely. We'll sit down. I'll buy you lunch. Which, by the way, if you've not bought in somebody lunch, it is absolutely the like best way to like for what is, what is a meal cost? A lunch meal, 10 bucks, 15 bucks. For ten or fifteen dollars, you can really impress somebody and uh, buy somebody lunch. is really, really a good idea. So we sat down, and uh, that's what she did. She said, "Hey, here's our portfolio of jobs that we have windows. Can you look at them?" I said, "I, I sure can." You know, blah blah blah. She goes, "Well, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you their prices and all of those projects. You tell me if you can meet those." Now, if you've never been given that, when somebody gives you the prices of the person and says, "Hey," do this. If you can match these prices, it's yours. 
I'm going to do everything I can to match those prices, even if they were fake, right? If they're like, oh, we'll take a little bit more off the top. I don't necessarily care because it's like, if I say yes, it's all mine. And these particular projects were bid right. They were, uh, one of the projects was low, but uh, we talked about it and uh, she was completely fine with changing the price on that one. Uh, but everything else was a go. Um, so it was one of those things where I made a phone call, I spent $10 in lunch, and I ended up getting like $40,000 a year worth of instant contracts. Now, that is like absolutely phenomenal. That lady sent me jobs and jobs and jobs and jobs for the whole thing. And there's one funny part about that is she sent a project that was a very tall building. It was taller than what I did. It was something that I then had to sub part of it out. And she was absolutely fine. She said she didn't care. She doesn't care who makes money on the deal. She just wants it to get done. So we were subbed the project and we subbed it to the high rise company. Pretty, pretty awesome. Subcontract is amazing. By the way, within this was the last 18 hours, I made $40,000 worth of new sales. Like, that is just unheard of. And I didn't have to do anything. And I got more work from her every single week, every other week. She'd call, hey, it's uh, so and so from XYZ. I just want to let you know we got a new one, uh, address 123 Fake Street. Uh, we already know pricing on it. By the way, I uh, building a relationship with somebody who subcontracts you when it's a good one like that, just like builders, let them know your pricing structure on a window. Uh, let them know what you're usually based off of because then they'll know how to bid it. But the other thing is, is most of the times, the longer the relationship, I never had to turn in bids. Should you get it done? I know where your pricing is. I know where your price is. Just get it done. And uh, I've had, you know, just the most luck with that and just getting it done. That was all, again, from a cold call for janitorials. So subbing work for janitorial, maid service, all that stuff's absolutely epic. It definitely, definitely works. And those people do not want to do windows. So guess what? I do. <laughs> you do, right? I almost said do-do, but I didn't. But uh, that's subbing. Subbing for janitorial is amazing. They send you so much work. Now, in the same side backwards is we would, on top of subbing work, we would throw work, which means when you throw work, it is um, somebody calls you and says, hey, Jersey, uh, yeah, uh, you clean my windows, um, but I wanted to know, do you know anybody who does plumbing? I do. John over here at ABC does plumbing. Oh, great. Do you have his number? Yeah, it is. Here's his number. So I would throw him work that way. Call John. John, what's up, man? Hey, heads up. I got a guy coming your way. All right, text. John, I just sent somebody over your way. Thanks, man. Letting them know that you did that makes them want to send it back to you. And when you have a relationship, I really did have um, a really good relationship with a lot of vendors that way uh, that did things that are out of my wheelhouse. We just sent stuff all the time. Oh, yeah, John just uh, gave me your number. My name is uh, Connie. I'm looking for some window cleaning, and he, he's my plumber. Oh, great, John. He's such a good guy. Yeah, he does some great work, doesn't he? Yeah, okay. Well, what's your address? Let's get you a squared up. Once you hand it over work, it's just like subcontracting, but nobody makes money. When you're subcontracting, somebody, everybody involved makes money on subcontracting. But if it's stuff that's out of your wheelhouse, you're not going to necessarily subcontract. I'm not going to subcontract a job for a plumber. But what I will do usually is I'll throw uh, work or we do have a couple of them that uh, we would do money. So like a finder's fee. Uh, if somebody threw me uh, something, usually they're like, ah, oh, don't worry about it. But I would give them, if we're not throwing work and I'm not sending them something, I would just give them 20 bucks or something or buy them again, lunch or beer or whatever, right? So that's part of it. That's kind of an off skirt of subcontracting, but that's really where it works. Um, high rise, like I mentioned, is another big one for uh, what got me into this in, in the first place. There are guys out there like uh, George Aguilar, like uh, Jeff Scott. Those guys are going around and they are subbing work from guys who do not have the knowledge or insurance or equipment to do high-rise. I'm not going to own tens of thousands of dollars worth of high-rise gear. I'm not going to pay 
10 plus thousands of dollars in insurance, I'm not going to have training done twice a year and everything else just so I can do one or two high-rise jobs a year. It just doesn't make sense. But instead, I'm going to pay a high-rise company who has hundreds of jobs, their insurance is spread out, their equipment's used, they know what they're doing because they do it every day. I'm going to sub that out. And I'm going to sub it out and make money. And the big thing is, is that I also have the subs that do that for me will bid an entire project. Now, I have um, some of them who are like, don't even give me the contact. And other ones are like, hey, I need the contact. I would put this bid together. I'm going to give it to you. It will be white labeled or it will be blank. Um, it will not have names or whatever. And uh, all of a sudden, now you can hand in and have everything done. I've had guys even do site inspections with them who subbed work for me. Uh, and people are extremely happy because the price that comes out still works out. I had uh, just one of my high-rise projects I made like $800 on. And uh, I made $800 because I got a phone call. And I went, absolutely. Yep, we'll, we'll, we'll get it all scheduled. I hung up, dialed the phone, and put it to somebody else. You know, two minutes worth of phone calls. Hey, how are you? Hey, I'm sending you this work. Made me $800. Every time I get an email, hey, uh, actually, I didn't even get emails. I just did it myself. We're, I would send them an email saying, uh, hey, um, we're scheduled to do that on the 13th because that's what I would get from my subcontractor. They would go, great, and I'd be done. I'd just do a little bureaucracy, and I made money. The other thing is, is when you're getting a big project that has high-rise in it, you don't do high-rise, you can lose a whole project because of one piece you don't do. Now, I'll give you another example. This is an interesting story because this was a uh, city contract uh, that I had done in my area. And the funny thing was, it was this old guy that did window cleaning forever. It was just him, and I'm pretty sure he had the city account. That was like what he did all year. And... Um, all of a sudden, I got a phone call from somebody. Who said, "Hey, are you like everybody is okay on your end?" I said, "Yeah." I said, "Why? Well, just there's a bunch of fire trucks. There's a window cleaner stuck." And I'm like, "A window cleaner stuck? What? How are they stuck?" Well, sure enough, the building they were on was like a three story, four story. I don't. It's like water fed territory. This guy dropped. He pinched his um, uh, uh, rack above his uh, parapet, which again, those words you might not know. But it just means you can't go down any farther. So now you're hanging on the side of the building. Get out your phone. Call the fire department. Like, yeah, I messed up. Fire department comes out. <laughs> blocks the street off. Crowds gather because you're just sitting up there. You're not injured. You're still sitting in your chair. You just literally can't go anywhere. And a uh, big ladder goes up. Everybody's watching. Super embarrassing. But guess who else is watching? The head of the project he was watching and unfortunately that guy never did work again for him because it was such a spectacle it made the paper it made the news that a window cleaner was stuck on the that he was like yeah, you know what it just you don't know enough you something happened you know and it could have happened to anybody uh most of the time you're careful enough not to let it happen but because of that it opened back up to other people who could bid he was so low anyway that it actually hindered everybody from bidding against him because he was so stinking low. But that is it. Having somebody who's experienced do work for you and on behalf of you. It's pretty awesome. Uh, another way of subcontracting that I really, really enjoy just because it's a great way to kind of bond with window cleaners is helping. So what we would do is we would get uh, a couple times a year uh, probably from like four or five different companies that would call and say, Hey, um, we got a project coming up next month. We're going to be short. We're looking for like two guys. Like, do you got two guys? And, oh yeah. We'll, we'll move some things around and, uh, we can certainly do that. What we would do on that type of project, is we would send two of our guys to their project to work with them. Now, when you do that kind of subcontracting, the prices is way higher. Um, you're not doing a per piece, you're doing a per hour at that point. So that particular person is still making you uh, not quite production, but darn close to normal production rate from them. They're happy to have somebody who's experienced and has the equipment. And it's just like you're doing any other job. You make them money and pay your employee from that. 
Uh, we did that on a few projects uh, every year, and it was great because you know what? You show up, you're like, hey, guys, what's going on? You know, you start kind of knowing people around. Yeah, cool, cool, what are we doing? You know, they prep you. You are now falling under there. Now, I would go and sub myself up because I was an office monkey, right? Um, sometimes we wouldn't be able to free people up. So I've done more projects than the guys have, but you would show up and, uh, basically now I'm just a worker and I work for that company. So they would be like, Oh, Hey, go grab those ropes. Get the, I'd be over there and doing that stuff. So basically that's sub helping. Sub helping is just something that's amazing because I've had, uh, I only needed a one, no, uh, two projects I needed it on. Uh, but what it was, was I brought another company in from a couple cities over and I'm like, dude, I'm in a bind. Is there anything you can do? And uh, the guy was like, well, uh, we can't do it this day, but we can do it this day and this day and do some weekend work. We got, we could send guys that time. I was like, oh, that's awesome. So I planned it around when those guys could come. We showed up with a herd of people. Everybody had their own equipment, knew what they were doing. We were like, what's up guys? You know, we knew everybody. And we just got to work. It was great. Doing that, it creates, again, you can roll up heavy if you need to. You can get projects done that are maybe bigger or beyond your scope. And it builds that rapport. It helps them out and it can help you out. Um, it's super, super awesome. But let's let's talk about pay. How do you get paid for subcontracting? Now, if I'm subcontracting for a, another window cleaner... I'm again going to give them their stipend, normal stipend. Uh, I make the job and I pay them. I'm never going to do an hourly thing for them because again, it's per project and a lot of the projects can get uh, added in. The other thing is if I'm subcontracting route work, which is awesome, it makes my route more profitable because I can pack it in tighter. I just have to send a different piece of paperwork. I have to have them sometimes sign maybe a different form if they require it. My particular company has a satisfaction form. Uh, it is not necessarily on a commercial side of things, but we did get a signature in commercial. Um, but some companies require you to have an in and out time. Some companies would require you to have a form signed, a satisfaction form, any of that stuff. And I'm more than happy to oblige. That's your policy, and I'm now working for you. So that's how you get paid in subbing. Bid the project. For them, they already know what the project is. Usually, they'll tell you, and then that's where your cut is. Now, usually, depending on how big the relationship is, you're going to take anywhere from uh, 10% to them or 25% uh, up to them. Usually, you're keeping about 75%. It's not like normal um, employee slash subcontractor where, oh yeah, we we use subs and those people do work for you and they make 38%. And you keep the rest. It's not like that. This is a completely different thing. So they just, all they simply do is do the paperwork on it and, and send out their invoice and, and you bring in the money. Uh, but the one thing, again, don't steal accounts. Don't be that guy. Don't. Uh, subcontracting for a janitorial company, like I said, that particular thing, super well set up. You're the one bidding the price. You're telling the janitorial company what the price is and then what you're going to charge them. So I'd always be like, hey, just so you know, it's a $59 job. Uh, yours is 50 or whatever. Um, uh, what I mean by that or what I'm saying by that is, is that they're going to charge $59, but I'm going to charge them 50 So they know on that particular project, they're going to make 9 bucks a week. People are going to be happy. The job's going to be done. It's going to be fast. It's on my time. It's off their shoulders and they make an extra 9 bucks. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot. It doesn't. But what happens when you have 50 accounts that you're doing that to? Adds up super, super quick. So that's janitorial. Same thing with other, you know, when you're doing uh, work, if there's a really close group, say uh, carpet cleaners or something like that, where you're subbing out for that. Again, subbing out is not just throwing work. Subbing out means that you're saying, hey, would you do this uh, for this amount or vice versa? Building those relationships have a lot of subs like that. You're going to get paid and you're going to not do any work to get those jobs because they're doing that. But you're paying them a little bit to kind of go through all the headaches. Keep them happy though. Uh, high rise. High rise, because I do not bid high rise, and I imagine you don't either. High rise, again, to get paid on that is you have the high rise company give you the bid for the project. You then increase the bid, or again, go back the other way where now you're the sub. Uh, they say, hey, it's going to be $2,500, uh, but you could get $3,000 for it. 
I'm going to go to them and say, hey, that bid is $29.99. And I already know now that I make $500 on that project. Right? That's high rise. By the way, look up George Aguilar or look up Jeff Scott. Those two guys do a lot of that. Uh, they're amazing, amazing references. It keeps your feet on the ground. I'm not holding insurance or equipment or training or none of that stuff. So check those guys out. Again, just two buddies of mine that uh, do awesome, awesome work. In a helping structure, you're going to then um, charge yourself hourly on that one because it depends on how long they need you on a project. So you're not bidding the project, you're actually bidding in with them. You show up and say, hey, uh, yeah, I can send guys, uh, let's do you know, uh, 45 an hour. Guy's like, uh, all right, 45 will work. Now 45 an hour from when you show up to when you're not all right, cool. You get in there and say you do five hours worth of work. The guy's like, all right, man, we're good. We'll send you home. I'll just shoot him a bill out for five hours. We're like, yo, it was five hours. Whatever. Hit me when you get a chance. Shoot him out the bill. That's subbing, uh, sub helping. That's how you get paid there. Um, those are the main ones. Those are all the subcontracting options that I've done. I hope you've done, and I hope that you do them. Because, again, subcontracts are super, super good. If you got anything out of this, or you've just spent some time hanging out, I would love nothing more than to be your rep. So if you can, save my number, 862-312-2026. That's a cell phone. Call me, text me, shoot me a text. If you shoot me a text, I would like this. If you're listening right now and you shoot me a text, be patient. I get people who send me a text like Sunday night at like 11 or like, you know, whatever. They're like, yeah, my cart's good. Awesome. I text him on Monday like, sweet dude, I'll run it now. And I'm like, oh no. At like midnight on a Sunday, they ran it. I'm like, don't do that. We don't ship till Monday anyway. So just let me come to work at least. I do work a lot, but you know, anyway. Um, but uh, I would love nothing more than that. Really, uh, I give you guys uh, credit about that, but uh, I do genuinely appreciate it. It is why I get to own my Ferrari. <clears throat> or Toyota Tacoma that I have uh, is because of that. So virtual high five of awesomeness plus ask me and you get one of these super cool awesome stickers. By the way, American Window Cleaner Magazine. See that right there? The little Mario guy and this other one. Uh, they are back in full force. If you guys didn't know, that magazine is out and uh, they're doing sticker sheets now and it's stinking awesome. So go get a subscription to that American Window Cleaner Magazine. Um, but either way, save my number and, uh, yeah, go ahead, comment if you're on YouTube, give us a thumbs up, let this thing rank in SEO awesome. And, uh, more importantly, until next week, go out there and subcontract, but more importantly, be epic.